Hello everybody, welcome to my EPMAS, Emin Bostab Martial Arts System uh, Combat Tape. Uh, so there will be three tapes about, uh, first tape about the punching techniques, how we apply our fist techniques against all different type of uh, punch attacks. Uh, tape two is mainly about kicks and multi uh, blood attackers and uh, combinations like tie box, kickbox kicks, how we defend ourselves. And the third tip we will show uh, you about uh, tackling or shoot fighter type attacks, throws. And also in each tape we will show you the Eskrima, Latosa weapon system, and uh, empty hands against weapon, weapons against weapon, and then uh, transition to real like swords, uh, gladiator swords, uh, things like that. About my personal bit, I'm training in the martial arts since 1976. I did some taekwondo, Thai boxing, uh, many years uh, Turkish style wrestling and Western boxing, uh, but all this I have done to understand uh, uh, Wing Chun and Eskrima very well, so to, to apply against all this type of attack since uh, my past has been quite a little bit violent. Uh, I've been raised in Germany, uh, lots of street fights, being a foreigner or nightclubs, you know, being bouncer for two years, and all what I cared in my whole life is how can I defend myself effective as possible and also have a style which is scientific enough and, and doesn't need to uh, rely on age or flexibility or force because I'm going to be one day very old and I will still be able to defend myself effectively and uh, therefore I uh, use the concepts of Wing Chun and uh, Eskrima Latosa weapon system and that's what we're going to do today. Okay, in tape one uh, I will explain you how we position our arms, our limbs to protect ourselves, to guard ourselves and why we do it different than other styles, like in boxing, they were very close, like here, or like karate style, sometimes here or here, or, or whatever, like, you know, some kung fu styles are like this. So uh, you have to understand also the scientific background of the Wing Chun system. So uh, the first logical thing you have to understand, or the thought you should have, or question you should ask yourself is, what do I want to protect? So in our case, uh, it's from our big brain to our small brain, anything in here, our, which are vital organs, we need this to protect. If we get attacked here, people can uh, cause a blackout on us. Once I have a blackout knocked out, I cannot defend myself. If you break an arm or a leg, you're still conscious and you can protect you somehow. Self. So now, once we know which area we want to uh, protect, so we need to find the center. So to, to uh, put, position our limbs there, to equally to every side, to the front, to the left and right, have the same distance with our limbs to protect it. Now, for that, we need geometrical measurements. Let's say, to get the, uh, to the center, we need a vertical midline, in that sense, to have 50% to divide left and right. So we'll be uh, here, and then we need a horizontal midline, so it divides exactly here. The cross point is our center point. From here, an imaginary line goes straight forward. This is our center line. So once we have these three lines, we create three dimensions, right? So from left to right, we have the width, from low to up, we have the height, and from here, this is your depth. If we position our limbs like this, now you see we have the highest and lowest point, it's our height, from elbow to elbow is our width, and from fingertip to our elbow back is our depth. So you have a three-dimensional protection shield. Okay, so time is the fourth dimension. The time we use if the opponent attacks, we move in. So we shorten the time of the impact, and said if I would stay here, the impact would be on my face, or here. If I can have the contact with the opponent's punch here, it's too late for me to deflect it or move myself away from him, or use his force to, to, to move myself away from him. But if it's here, by me moving forward, I create pressure. So if he's stronger, my arm tries to intercept, he creates something like a spring type of effect. So my arm becomes very flexible, so I can borrow the opponent's force. So therefore, time really makes me to get the impact much up here, so the, the, the sense of touch of my arms can, uh, has time enough, it's a direct reflex, to, to, to feel is where the pressure of the attack goes. So in, in our system, we don't care really about what type of attack it does. We care about angles. It's a back fist, like a diagonal angle, or circular hooks, or swing, or straight, like a jab, or a straight uh, punch, or like a karate punch. Really doesn't matter, or a Wing Chun punch. So there, we have only these three type of angles, circular, diagonal, and straight. So here for, uh, I'm going to uh, demonstrate you a little bit the Wing Chun punches. So Michael, can I have you have it? So very, very, very simple. If, if Michael would give me a straight attack, so I, I would not punch like this. Okay? Or like, I would not punch like a boxer. Or maybe this side. 
So if he punches with the shoulder, I punch with the shoulder, what you see is mostly this one. I hit you, you hit me technique. Therefore, you look sometimes very handsome. You, know, you cannot fight like this. The idea is, because Wing Chun has been created for the average person. If you go back, the founders were two women. So they're not built strong, so they cannot afford to take a punch. So in, in my case, or Michael, we're, we're professionals, so we train. But still, for the average person to have the chance relatively in his own environment, where he every day goes out after work, he wants to protect in his own environment himself. So we're not teaching people to fight, let's say, Mr. Mike Tyson. Because if he wants to do that, he must train every day, three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. So no break. Different food, different uh, schedule of his life. But then he's professional again. So this is really for the average person in his own environment to defend himself. So he needs a very intelligent, very scientific, smart uh, self-defense system. So if Mike would punch me, we keep our shoulders very straight, you see? So when you look at the general in boxing, your target is your, your face, your nose. If I punch, this is the longest, the jab is the longest weapon, but where's my face? So if I really look here, this is the length I'm using, this part. But in Wing Chun, we punch, we use the whole arm. So if he gives me a jab, I move in, my arm is always longer. So compare the jab. If I put my shoulder in, just like boxing, well, you have a lot of the time this type of situation in boxing. Okay? So also, we, our force and our punch comes from the elbow, which I will go a little bit later into it, how, how we get strong punches. So if, if, if you punch me just a normal punch, if I'm outdoor, my elbow low, it's a substitute for the triangle we have here. If you just leave your hand here, look, the effect here, I, I split his force, deflect it here. Same as when I'm from outdoor, same position here. If I'm indoor, I lock my fist. Okay, or if he comes cross, I lock my fist. I don't leave it banded, so otherwise he has a hole here. That looks like a Swiss cheese. You know, like the cheese with the holes? <laughs> Just goes in here, all right? So really the idea is each time, no matter I'm indoor or outdoor or diagonal, it's the same punch for you. It's the same punch. The point is now, since we're exercising, I have to stay still. So indoor, I must lock my fist so it cannot intercept. If I leave it here, you see what's happened? Outdoor, I must leave it low. But in action, if he punches me in slow motion, I move and look. By the time I affect this already cut, this angle with interception, with the force cuts him already. And then the time when I hit him, it's going to happen this. Look, it's the same momentum, very slow, you see? It's the same punch. If it comes diagonal, it's the same punch. Since I'm standing here, and we just exercise a little bit, let's say I'm just the outdoor, you see, I'm only crossing my punch. So the idea is really I'm doing the same punches if I would do here and chain punch, you cross the same See? So, I'm not trying to punch his limbs. I don't care about his limbs. In our idea, this is a general in here. That guy wants to hurt me. This is the tool. This is the soldiers. So I don't want to start the punch like this. A lot of people do mistakes. They punch against the limbs. So, when he comes, I really go in. I don't care about he has a fist there or not. See? In this case, I'm outdoor. It could be I'm indoor. Then I lock in. Because I don't want to stay here so he doesn't get in here. Punches. See? So if I'm keep punching, if I outdoor slowly, so you see? Now I have to lock. If if Michael doesn't lock, so this means I can intercept totally. So therefore we just do since we're posing here right now, not really fighting. Also what you learn once you have learned these punches, it's also to learn the balance, balance, forward and backward. So if I do this, you see? So this is very, very difficult. A lot of people just punch in the air. You need to do lots of partner exercises where you can emphasize force. A lot of people do lots of aerobics, as I mentioned. They punch you, make steps. It's all fantastic. Drills are good to get a very good co uh, coordination. But more important is also put force. You have to deal with force, how you can absorb or deflect the force. And the last thing in any exercise we do here in our system is anger. Because a lot of martial arts don't practice that last issue that's happened in the street is anger. Because this is a component you cannot calculate. Even a small person is angry, he can knock out a very big person because if he has the willpower, the anger, you never know how big that anger is. So we try to put this in. Okay? The only thing we don't do is, is punching for real. So uh, also to, to exercise this, later on we put our foot forward. It's the same thing. This is basically just control. Let's say he's a boxer and jabs me. I can control his legs. So I can control all the or cross the other way around. So just, no, it could be a kickbox, not just a boxer. Maybe he wants to j j move in and do something. Boom! So I can be safe, he doesn't kick me. Or I'm here, he doesn't kick me. If you see a lot of martial artists, 
if you could go and bam, 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 and then bang. Okay, you see lots of these things that come with the knees. So this is also preventing us. We have the absolute control over our, our opponent. So if you just step with this, maybe it's better for the angle. So you see? So I want to do this and hit him maybe, or just with a punch. Okay, so I can control him. If he wants to kick me here, I can barely see, see what he does or feel what he does. So all in Wing Chun has to do with the sense of touch. It's very, very important. So what I'm going to let you do is to watch a little bit when uh, Joe and Michael does this with the steps, just chain punches, no kicks. So just two together, this is the punches first program. Okay. Start slowly and then go a little bit faster. So here you can see if, if he doesn't lock his uh, elbow inside, so Michael rushes in. We just just practice normally. Try your best. Okay. And if the force is too strong for Joe, he can switch around with his legs, just chest the angle. So you start to get flexible. So your balance to the left, to the side, to the front is stabilizing here. Okay, stay more in the middle. Yes. Another thing is after this. You see how, he, how much he has to deal with the balance, going left, right, okay? And the most important thing is you don't try to get here in, in the problem that, that to hit the guy's limbs. Always hit this computer, always hit his uh, head. Okay, thank you. So another thing is force also. When we just do this, and let's say uh, Michael is indoor, and he tries to really lock his elbow. So I, I use my elbow force. I'm very, very relaxed. If I punch, this is very soft here. It's all our force comes here. My fist is very soft. It's like a little bird here. You don't want to squeeze to death or don't let it go. Just keep it very relaxed. Also, when I punch, it's all is here. It's not, I, we don't punch with the fist. Like in boxing, we punch with the fist. We punch with the elbow. If I leave it here and then push my elbow in, you see, it's the force comes from here. So we use three joints, our wrist, elbow, our shoulder, if you look at my shoulder, it's pulling even back. See? So it's not like this. So this will be a push. So by, 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 by pulling my shoulder back, my joints are not grown together, the bones. They're like holded by tendons and muscles, very flexible. So look at how long my fist goes back and forth. So even I, I don't touch, and I'm not going to open my fingers, so I'm that far away from, from, from Mike, I was hit with the whole surface, the lower three bones, the whole fist. So I will still touch him. So, okay, if I'm that far away, this will be enough to break his nose. So this is just from the elbow, because it's stretching. Now we also use our spine. When I punch, when we punch three times, we call this arrow punches. At the three punch, my spine goes up. If I keep my fist totally locked, without bending it, I'm just punching from my spine. Just, just this one. So you have to understand, when you step in, boom, this is in. So it's very explosive, very powerful. The biggest power source next to your elbow is your footwork. Because if, if a smaller person, smaller person create a whole uh, punch power by, by using, let's say somebody's 140 pounds and the opponent's 200. So they realistically have given the chance to knock somebody out. It's basically using your body weight to move in. If you look at in boxing, whatever, we dance, the moment I, I, I stay and punch, my weight is still. So it's about 40 to 60% of the rotation where my body, body weight is behind the punch. If you look at karate, they do it with the hips. Very traditional, of course. But the modern karate is basically boxing, you know, kickboxing. It's American boxing. It's traditional karate mixed with, 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 with let's say, uh, uh, Western boxing. It's kickboxing, but they, they, they don't do punch anymore like this. So they punch like boxing. But still, if you use your hip, it's maybe 20% of your body weight behind. So in Wing Chun, if you look where just Mike stands, look at my rear fit. So you look where he says it's really 100% body weight, exactly where he used to stay. So it's 100%. This gives a small, smaller person, a woman, or nowadays, look, the profession of, the, of us change. A lot of people are sitting in offices. Uh, more like a service type of jobs, the computer, they don't have the exercise like, like, like we used to have. Old days, people work in, in factories and, you know, like really construction. More and more people sit at homes and offices. So the physical thing changes and people don't have the time, maybe two times a week, for an hour and a half, two hours to exercise. 
because they have family, that they have other hobbies, whatsoever traffic to get from home to your job takes you about 12 hours, 10 hours. If you work eight hours, one hour lunch break, you need one hour ride. In LA, you need two hours ride <laughs> with traffic. So you have to understand the whole thing. So people have maybe maximum three times a week, mostly twice, because they have other things. They have girlfriends or whatever, girls have boyfriends, whatever. So we have to think all these things. And this person wants to defend himself or herself. So very, very important to have a realistic time frame, a realistic system, scientific, enough to make the, the, the physical abilities to use it to, to defend themselves. So when I do the same thing, just stay. I got to be very easy. So when I step in here, or even halfway, it's enough power, boom, to make him go down. But if you do it explosive with three punches, it's very, very difficult. Also to, to, to defend, deflect punches, we don't use blocks at all. Let's say even, even if Michael would, would block me, so if I do a single punch, maybe, okay, in, in very traditional karate is as an example. So it is okay, but again, here is prearranged. The sensei tells the student, give me number one, I give you number two. Mathematically, he would do number three. <laughs> the sensei would lose, but I cannot have it. Okay, I'm the sensei, I have the black guy, black belt guy. So I cannot uh, lose the fight, right? See, there's the one, I do two, and I stop, hey, and then I win. Very traditional, I understand. Don't misunderstand, I don't want to put any other styles down. It's the idea to understand science, mathematics, trying to leverage force, relation of force, all the things that are very important. I respect all the other styles. But again, I'm concerned about my safety. I don't want to practice anything which brings me or my students in danger. Let's say I explain you three dimensions. Look, this is one dimensional. See, so just to left to the right or up to the down, or down to up. So this means I open myself up, please punch my face technique. So I consciously cannot teach this to my student. You must understand this. This could be any style you can put a name. I really don't care. You can, what I teach, put Amy Bostebe in front or call it whatever you want. Important is, for me, it's very important that my student get the best so they can defend themselves, okay? So, and also we don't teach this for tournaments. Okay, this is really for, for protection. So let's say if Mike would give me any, any type of an attack, we would not stay here and pose. So the, the person, a smaller person doesn't have the time like we box and you jab me, I take that punch, I jab him, he takes that punch. How many punches you can take? If you're a professional boxer, you train to take punches. That's why again, right? You look like this. So in Wing Chun, we don't. That's why our head is very far back. So we want him, we want him to, to come and step for me. Also strategy or tactics about distances, very, very important. So of course, I'm not going to stay here and let him hit me. Good. I'm here. If, I, if he's far away, I can even afford to this. He cannot attack me. So I want him to make the step for me. For, for Michael to attack me, he needs to step in. So his first step is a preparation, maybe for his jab or, or right, whatever. So if he steps first, my step is straight and attack. So he makes a step for me to intercept. I just say, thank you very much. Now, after that, let's imagine I'm smaller. So I must have much more technique and much better punches to overcome him. So if he comes in, so I have no other choice than to give machine gun punches, okay? Or chain punches, we call it. So just go in, because it's only one round. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, we'll be right back with you, and I'll show you some combinations, single against uppercut, hooks, all these type of, diver, uh, uh, or long fist kung fu, you know, like these type of things, and then, and then we do combinations. And then we do a little bit more freeze, you see how Wing Chun is applied to them. Okay, uh, I show you just a few uh, examples how you can train uh, coordination, cardio, uh, 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 combination, speed, power. But this is few. We do this on a double end ball, so you, 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 your muscles uh, adjust. You know, a lot of muscle memory is very, very important in fighting. So all coordinations. So here we just saw some stuff which which gives you really cardio, uh, gives you speed, gives you power, flexibility, and maneuvering your 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 your. Uh, uh, punches, you know, like when enemy doesn't, doesn't, or opponent doesn't stay still, he moves very fast, so you have to be capable to really catch up with him. A good boxer is dancing a lot, so most people are too stiff and, and too single uh, view oriented, so in Wing Chun we really don't care where he goes. So Yanis uh, uh, and Joe's gonna just show a little bit slowly and then go in and steps, and then we show some with the focus mitts as well. Uh, well, enjoy it, huh?
Thank you very much. So, Michael, if I have you. So, uh, the same thing with the focus miss. It's more, more for uh, really maneuvering, go left behind. So, it's a little bit more speed. You start slowly out. And it's, it's light punches, but the important is that you're very flexible with your footwork. Later on, I will explain a little bit more about the footwork. But now, I want you to just focus on, on that, that he really has to go in a short range, very flexible. Later, we use the same thing against multiple attackers. Okay, but this is, I will go into this more in tape two. So enjoy this one. Okay, thank you very much. So, as you can see how dangerous he might be with his hands, we also use, uh, of course, our, our, our legs, if it's a boxer or whatever, what type, Michael, uh, type of an opponent you have. So, this is always your advantage, advantage again. So, if he tries to punch me, I can, I can kick him first, slow motion maybe, move in, or same thing again. See, go all the way through. It's very dangerous. I don't want to be too uh, explosive here. He comes. You can stop him here or whatever combination. You just went right in there and, and attack him. So all this I will show in tape two a little bit more intensively. So I, I mentioned you, uh, something to you about sense of touch. So we have this special method which calls Chizo. Uh, uh, well, people say here it's uh, sticky hands or whatever, like uh, it's pressure. It's all about, about pressure. What's happened here is really, just imagine one river bed and two waters, two, two rivers coming and colliding. So the one river, the stronger with the stronger pressure, doesn't immediately take the other one with him. What's happened really physically is when they collide, it's like a fountain. And then the stronger will overlap. But still, the weaker one tries from underneath much as he can to push pressure doesn't immediately follow, right? So what's happening is here too, you see? If he punches, I punch, I not immediately give in. I still try to go in and intercept, intercept. Even he becomes stronger, you see what's happening is he's deforming my arm. It's all physics, all action of, of force. So if he, if he moves in, he moves, 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 then he rotates me, you see? But my pressure still wants to go if he drops his fist. So if he does a little bit more fast, boom, so it continues, okay? so. It's all really physics again. The whole system is scientific. Everything I explain must be mathematically, scientifically explainable to you. Otherwise, it's not real Wing Chun. Right? There are lots of different Wing Chun styles. Um, let's say if he gives me a punch, some people have a solution. Look, one, two, three, four. This is, you can say it's Wing Chun because the techniques look like. Okay? And also, technique is not important for us. It's more the concept, how I apply my limbs to this situation. A lot of people have techniques. Let's say you see very traditional other style. They have a knife. Uh, just kind of knife, please, quick. I show you something, and you understand a little bit better what I'm talking about. So people show you techniques, but technique, you should not rely too much on technique itself because technique could cost you life, right? So because it's a combination, prearranged movements are techniques. So if, if Michael attacks me, let's say very traditional people, like in Jiu-Jitsu, show you something like this, bang, and then they go here, and he taps out. Well, the problem is if he does the same thing, Maybe the student does <laughs> this one. So it's, you know, the technique doesn't work. Same again with the, with the punch. If you punch it, I do this, one, two, three. This is terrible Wing Chun. But if he punches me, maybe I do this and he punches me second, maybe it looks like this, one against one. It's better Wing Chun. But the best Wing Chun is, if, let's say he gives me a, a Pak Sao we call and punches. If I have, if I have really nice Pak Sao, right? look, in that moment I have one hand against two and punch him. This is the best Wing Chun you can have. If one hand can control two of your opponent, so very, very important. Or the same thing as people grab your wrist with both hands. And you see, like in take one or something, hap kido, they raise their legs over, or, or people do this. Take two hands for one hand. You see, very simple. If somebody grabs you, you don't care. <laughs> this is what you do. It's, I want you to understand the simplicity of Wing Chun. It's very direct. We don't really care. Or, or if, he, if he really holds me again with two hands, this means I actually, with one hand, I have defended already both his hands. <laughs> so I just have one free. It's playing chess, right? You're always a step ahead. So I want you to understand what I mean by, by having one technique, another technique. 
Okay, so it's, it's combination. And lots of, like Jeet Kune Do, it's all combinations play. They use the word concept a lot. But what does concept really mean? It's all, all science. You have to go with the science. So we just created anything after this, just the methods. Methods may work, may not, but a system always works. There are uh, internal and external systems. Look, when we do Chizal, it's quite internal. It's all Chizal movements. But I can use the same movement against external attacks. So when, when somebody comes in, in my school, they don't want to fight against chain punches. They don't want to fight against Wing Chun type attacks. They're afraid of against swings, headlocks, pulls, eye gouges, kicks. Very simple thing, things people can do without martial arts. Hey, look, you're in a bar. You're drinking your beer. And somebody goes, hey, what is wrong? Boom, he gives you a headlock. He doesn't need any martial arts for that. This is what you do in school. Or say, oh, yeah, you're talking to me, peng. Gives you a straight kick. Any old man, anybody can do that. So what I'm saying is this is the most fear people have. Right? Or just grab your hair. So, or grab your shirt. Things people don't need to train. And this is basically every human being out there could be an opponent. Could be extra dangerous to you. Grab you with anything without any prior training before. So this is what people come for. So we apply this. If he gets me in the headlock, boom! <laughs> I know how to do and defend it. Same concept. If he gives me a swing, boom, it's the same technique. But if a swing get, becomes a headlock and pushes, so I go behind. So what? So you see, the exercise we do is the same, no more holding or punching, grappling or kicking. A roundhouse kick or a hook, like look at the swing, punch. Look, bang, 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 bang. So he gives me a roundhouse kick. Why should I change my concept? Why should I change my concept? So, all this mixed fighting stuff, it's, it's good, it keeps you fit. But the point is, each time you have to change your concept of the approach. So if it's a kicker, I have to stay like this, or it's a puncher like this, if it's a grappler, I have to do this. A real fight is split seconds. It's so fast, so fast, you don't have time to change your concept. So you need a concept which goes all the way through. So that's why it becomes a system. Against your own or with your own style to support you, become better, and then mainly, the first thing should be always provide you defend you getting external things, the everyday attacks out in the street. And once you master that, then you will learn the art itself. Then you can go in and do it against or with your art, not against your art. So, and one of these methods we call Chisel, as I mentioned, it's uh, implanting reflexes. And, and the physics I explained you with the riverbed, the pressure. So all what's happened, so we have constant pressure here. Of course, in the beginning, the student learns how to position. And here, again, I apply the center line theory. Our center line theory with this one, the, the, the three dimensions. If you really look, our circle goes this way and this way. Tai Chi stuff, they have wonderful stuff too, they have, uh, but they go like horizontal. So you have this part open. So Wing Chun goes vertical. Since I'm here, from here to every direction, from this center, it's the same distance. And then with the depth, I have this circle. So and this is what I apply here, if you look at, look, depth, and I have the horizontal. So this really covers my trunk. So, and it's all about sensitivity. So this is not visual. It's a right, uh, direct contact, a direct reflex. You mean your nerve system reacts immediately here. Doesn't it go, when it punches through my eyes, I think you make about 16 decisions. And you ask, you know, your, your right brain is responsible for your left side, vice versa, the other side. So you have to recognize the punch. Even he lifts the fist. Now you have to see, oh, is this a straight punch? Could be a swing, could be an uppercut, could be a diagonal. So for me, I can go boom, I can boom, I can go straight, or maybe I can go low. So, so the decision is split second. So that's why visually you have very, very difficulties to defend that. So therefore, our limbs are very up here. If I stay here or here, look, look, hey, let's say I want to hide in a nightclub or a, a restaurant. I don't want to look aggressive. Look, the guy pushed me maybe. He said, hey, come on, leave me alone, man. I want to look passive. I want that the people, witnesses, also see, look, hey, this guy is not aggressive. He shows, I don't want to fight. But if the guy comes, I can do everything I want. If he moves in, pushes up somewhere, you see? I can do whatever I want. So the same thing you learn here. So really, it's all about defending yourself on the street according to laws. We live in a, in a civilized world. So we can not just go and chain punch people like I asked you earlier. I just cannot go and beat somebody to death. <laughs> and that's what we're teaching. We teach you also to control your your, your, your anger too, because this is, again, most thing. Anger is something, if this comes out, my God, take your legs in your hand and run. Okay? So you don't want to just be a, a monster and fighting people. You want to you also learn to control. And again, here, 
is all about sense of touch. Here we implant the person, let's say he learns against the pressure. Remember the riverbed I explained here? He pushes, I push. So this is the first. As long as I don't step, if it's open here, it moves in. As long as I don't intercept, and I'm going to move in, he doesn't need to turn. If I'm very strong, I can maybe turn him, you see? And then he can lock me down, guide it, and attack me. Of course, I can get out here. <laughs> I do things. See, once he learns a bunch of movements on sections, then we mix them like a puzzle. So he doesn't know anymore which technique is going to come. So basically, he really relies, once we have formed his body, that he understands to be flexible. You see, just exercise like this, huh? or exercise like this, you see? Now he's really taking my force, he's borrowing my force. Now I borrow his force, you see, to be rotated. But actually what my limbs really want to do is attack him all the time. So a lot of Wing Chun people use the word passive. It's totally wrong. Look, passive is this, Michael do this, don't move. Now he's passive. <laughs> I just punch him. This would be, pa we're not passive, we're absolutely active. But our, our defense movement are unconsciously because we implanted a reflex moving one million times over and over under different pressure. Hard, soft, uh, speed. We put everything on this. Here, let's say Mike can give me very slowly in the beginning so I understand the movement. He can go fast, aggressive. Maybe he can, he can hit me down with this and punch me with that. Boom! See? Uh, all this different type of version makes you more flexible. That's why it's very, very important. We always have the uh, saying, like, the best, best teacher's pain. Because if the student mostly don't listen, he's always a smart, ah, uh, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> he knows everything better. So whatever, when you punch him one time, you will see how, how fast his guard is up there. Okay, if he doesn't listen. But second, this is we call repetition. It's very important that you have to repeat a lot, but different type of repeating, not the same boring thing. Okay, and the third is me, <laughs> because I know something against the pain. <laughs> if you would listen to me first, it would, it would make me the first best teacher. But since uh, humans always put their brain in, I'm only three, but I can live with that too. It's fine with me. <laughs> because end of the day, uh, when you become an expert, you say your teacher is very good because he gives you the, the, the skill and the understanding and the concept. You can help yourself. I, I honestly believe a good trainer or a teacher or a sifu is somebody who has to give the tools to the student, and that's what a lot of people do. But the problem is they don't explain them how to use the tools and how to apply it. Okay, so it's also very, very important to make the student understand what he has to do to, to succeed. Okay, uh, this is a wrong ego of some, some teachers, and I'm not that type. I want my students all to be in good shape because they're my living on two legs business cards. <laughs> if they behave well, if they train and they move well, it's the best advertising I can have. Therefore, I, I can really honestly I want my students that they become very good. And then tell, uh, share all this stuff. There is no such a thing as secret. The only secret is for you if you're lazy. Because everything is a known secret to you. I can show you, but you're lazy, you will never get it. So it's a known secret for you, okay? So please train, okay? So um, now let's say here, Michael, we do a little bit cheese out. We start slowly, and then he can try the attack, whatever. You attack me. So when you do this later, I don't even need to look. I can. Okay. So you can see it really doesn't matter, and you see me very relaxed, flexible. I don't care what he does. 
this is what you want to achieve. But again, it looks easy, it's very difficult. Because exercise, exercise, exercise. Okay? Okay, what you, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about the uh, Latosa Scream uh, system or concept. So it's pretty much similar to what, what you heard, heard in these tapes uh, about Wing Chun, because it's all is about, about physics here, okay? And, and again, balance. And also what we have in, in the center line theory in Wing Chun, we have it uh, it's called box theory in, in Eskrima. It's like basically mostly recovering that trunk here. So it's like a box. But from here, so what I do is I offline and use this box as my, my, my target for defensive and offensive. But generally all the time offensive. If I have, uh, Joe, if I have you here a little bit. So if, if you both are here in a fighting position, pre-fighting, we're both looking at the same frame. So if you would attack me, move in, I would just step out. So he's always in my frame, but I'm out of his frame. So just the same thing with the, with the punch. If he would punch me in Wing Chun, so I would just basically see my center line is here, but I'm off of his force line. It's the same idea. But this is empty hand, so we can go on a straight line. Here's you have weapon. Mostly weapon come from outside to the inside. Of course, you have stabs and stuff like this. So in general, we, we, we have very simple basic strikes compared to many other uh, Filipino styles of weapon. Uh, 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 Grandmaster Rene likes to use the word weapon system because it's transition to other weapons. It could be medieval from Filipino to any type of weapon. So since his uh, concepts of, of uh, applying his art is basically use everything possible as a weapon to defend yourself. Okay, we have a simple from the center of your head to, to your shoulder. That angle would be a number one strike. So just, just for training purposes. Same side, the other is a number two strike. The angle like this, number one. Anything here. Lots of other Filipinos that go like, they have 24 strikes or whatever. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> you go like this. Of course, we don't care. Anything in that angle would be a number one. The other side is number two. From shoulder down to your hips is a, it's a number three. And from shoulder to the other side is a number four. This we call uh, number five is any step straight. And the reverse number one or two. Just the same thing as reverse. So that's, that's basically what it is. So rest you don't care about an inch higher or lower. So it really doesn't matter. So this is what we try to protect. So this is the whole thing now. Um, we do lots of shadow work, stuff like this, uh, imaginary thing, just, just to get the feeling, lots of footwork. But uh, I want to just show you some, some explosive stuff here. First, uh, empty hand, and then with weapons, uh, so systematically go in. So very simple, if, if, uh, if you would hit me very slow motion, number one, I, I, boom, see, I would do this. I'm not trying to, whatever, to block these things, generally not like this. I, I have seen lots of other stars that are blocked even like this. Even like this, it's so strong, you couldn't even hold it. It's too dangerous because of the speed and the weapon and the, and the leverage of the weapon here. It's really ridiculous. Or some people really they go like, I don't want to twist your arm, things like this. It's just too dangerous and it doesn't, it's not realistic. However, it's more realistic just like the concept of bullfight. You have to avoid the force coming at you. You just step to a side. So if you would attack me, I, go, I would be here, crack. So again, it's intercepting. If somebody has a weapon, you want to take his, his space away. He cannot use it, especially as a stick. Knife is a little different story. It's on the cutting edge. But... Uh, also, originally, historically, this is the size of a machete, just a safe for, uh, form of, of training instead of having a real machete. Because if you have a machete, you have to be really, really fast because you don't want to joke around. Anyway, general thing, if you see something blinking, knife or something, I suggest you take your legs in your hand and run. There's nothing to be bravery or cowardness. This is your life. And even the most stupid kid can, can uh, kill you, stab you. Okay? And then generally, people carry a knife. They're not going to pull it out like in the movie and say, hey, are you ready? Because they're going to just come from behind and stab you because they don't want to see you. You to see him as a knife or something, okay? So, uh, however, so if he attacks, I show you something. <laughs> you can go in and. <laughs> okay, or whatever, a different angle. <laughs> there we go. Okay, you go in. straight in, whatever, so it depends on whatever. So you have to understand all one thing. Even the attacker doesn't know what you as a defender are going to do on him. So it's always both ways. Even you're afraid, you, you know he's, he's very good or whatever, he has a weapon, he's scary. 
situation that you're nervous, the situation is scary, but still even the attacker doesn't know what you're going to do. He doesn't know anything about you either, okay?